<laughs> Alan, can you start the recording? There we go. Hi, hi there. Did somebody mention Ross? <laughs> <laughs> oh, two <laughs> uh, We're going to get the, the meeting started. Welcome, everybody. My name is Ben Partida, the current president. I am joined here by uh, a bunch of great people. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the April meeting 2023 of the Robotics Society of Southern California. Uh, we have a great talk by Alan Sim, who will be walking us through some ChatGPT stuff, uh, some wizardry, and uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of few things that we're going to bring up today. So let's get started. Alan? All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so, uh, for the past couple of weeks, I have been caught up in a whole bunch of like drama and intrigue and subterfuge about developments in the large language model space. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here and we'll get this started. That catches up. Um, I thought a lot of ways about how I wanted to start this talk, and it's going to be a little bit extended from previous months. We could go up to 90 minutes, so I appreciate your patience. Um, uh, so where I think I want to start today is with uh, a concept and a news article. Um, the concept is uh, called the technological singularity, first coined by Dr. Werner Vinge. Uh, to describe a point in time beyond which we can't imagine because the future is so different we can't map it to any of our existing um, abilities to to conceive um, earlier on like the understanding was it was some fixed point in time and space in the future and then we just can't figure it out um, so you can fear it you can embrace it but it's out there somewhere um, my understanding of this is actually a little bit different. I think that this technological singularity, this concept, is in a different time and place depending on where you're at. So to try to explain modern society to someone who's, you know, crossing over to take over the Americas, um, you know, this could very well, or before this, could be a technological singularity for them. And just like us, there's a point in time that we can't see past um, because the future is so different. We just can't wrap our heads around what it's going to look like. Um, I think we're uh, kind of approaching that with the current generation of large language models. Uh, the second thing is a kind of a preface is mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you've heard that there was an open letter written by a bunch of smart people and signed by even more smart people, including uh, Elon Musk, that says basically, hey, uh, GPT-4 is great, but can you hit the pause button for about six months so society and the world can catch up? Um, we've had several of these kind of scares in the past. If you remember back to when GPT-1 was first announced. They withheld releasing the model because they wanted to more fully understand the impact to society. And then they eventually released it. Uh, they got GPT-2, we got GPT-3, and then chat GPT six months ago, and now the behemoth GPT-4. And so they're saying, hey, uh, can you guys just like stop advancing for a little bit? And you know, the reality of it is if you're a company, uh, whose job it is to make money for your shareholders, you're not going to pause on anything that will make you more money. But uh, so the, the intent isn't necessarily to affect the pause, but to put on your radar that things are advancing really fast. And in that case, I think the letter um, really hits home. So that's, that's kind of the groundwork that I wanted to lay as we move forward. Um, I want to take you on a little trip, a little journey through one corner of this, and this is only the development in the past three weeks. Notice the number of slides up there. There's been a lot of development. So um, at, at the end of this talk, we're gonna, we're gonna end up on some easy to follow directions that will instruct you how to get this language model, Vicuna, installed on either 
your computer with just a CPU or any computer with a modern GPU and get similar results. And we'll we'll attach to the link and we're gonna we're gonna take you um, all the way there. So uh, if you've been following on the forum, you've seen a couple of postings by myself and others. And actually about half the forum is covered with GPT-4, chat GPT box. Um, not only is it very exciting, it, it, there's new things happening every day. And um, a post that I had, oh, that was last week, um, had a link and you can preview. And, and this was me reproducing someone else's experience using the chatbot. And uh, to briefly go over it, I'm like, hey, write me a website with three buttons. Each button should display a random joke when pressed. And it spits out the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript to make that happen. And then it explains what it does. Second follow-up. Hey, instead of using that random joke function, can you just hard code three simple jokes instead? It then rewrote the entire solution, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to hard code three jokes. Now, ChatGPT is better at this. This is running on a 13 billion parameter model. And uh, at this point, I think I was running it off of their website, but Holy smokes, let's do a little subject change. What's the meaning of life? Quantificates on the meaning of life. Uh, what's up? Language model, blah, blah, blah. This sounds very much like the canned chat GPT uh, pontificating on things it's not supposed to do. And oh, let's do a follow-up. Hey, what are the three jokes that you hard-coded to the website above? Pretty big question. It has to understand the context of the conversation to be able to answer that. And it did. Next question, exact steps to become a lawyer in California. Uh, I think this one was seven steps, eight steps. Big question, tell me more about step six. From the context, it gives you a whole set of uh, details for that on a 13 billion parameter model, a model that you can run now, you can run it on any graphics card with 12 gigabytes or more of memory. So most modern graphics cards. Uh, second follow-up, uh, this is one of my benchmarks about an adorable snail. It gives me a good story. Uh, I ask it to rewrite it using a, some different elements, and it does. And in this earlier version of um, the toolkit that I was using, it wasn't, it didn't fully understand how to stop at the next prompt. And so uh, in this version of it, it hallucinated its next prompt. So it was just guessing, you know, what would normally come next as, as one does when you're having a conversation. And it guessed that I would probably ask it next how to write a short rap song based on the story. This 13 billion parameter model that, that fits in a graphics card wrote a rap using it. This is a rap, you can sing it in your head. Yo, 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 it's time for a tale about a snail named Snuggles. Oh, so frail, living her best life. It's got all the character beats, all the character beats of the short story. Oh my gosh, right? Like I would have never thought in a million years to ask to do that. And yet here it's, it's spinning it out, right? So this model, um, which you can run uh, on, uh, on a graphics card, um, supports all the conversational features of ChatGPT. Um, and I'm going to walk you through all the papers and how they got here. Um, a, a flawed metric suggests that it's about 90% of the ChatGPT model. And you can get an account and use it online for free most of the time. And you can uh, pay 20 bucks for priority access. And we have an API that you can use that you can bounce queries off of the you know any of the threes the turbo 3.5 as well as gpt4 um and so here's where we're going to end up let me let me walk you through the story of how we got here um starting with of course the uh the standard bear um open ai they um they uh you know they're they're the ones that proved this wasn't a dead end uh, and they have paid uh, modes that you can use so you can bounce queries, uh, you can write code and build businesses and models and applications off of it. Uh, oh, 
Oh, sorry, here, let me, uh, one second. We got a little report issue there. And um, there's a couple things I, I want to point out. So prior to JAPS GPT, which was just released six months ago, round numbers, the models that you could pay to use were just called GPT. Now they're called Instruct GPT. And they had uh, four models available, Ada, Babbage, Babbage, Curie, Da Vinci. Da Vinci was the most powerful model. Um, their paper describing it um, describes it as a 175 billion parameter model. This was the previous standard bearer. Through the creative use of prompts, you can steer it uh, into different modalities. And uh, the price to use that is still um, uh, two cents per, per thousand tokens. And then you can see that it's one tenth of the price for Curie, and then one fifth of the price for Babbage, and one twentieth for Ada. So I was kind of wondering um, what are the different sizes of the GPT 3 models? I should have had this up. Um, ah, Maybe here. Uh, and what it raced, uh, I should have had the link up. Um, getting back to the pricing here. Uh, it was 175, and it goes down to like 7 billion parameters for ADA. Now, a couple of years ago, it was unheard of to run any of these on consumer hardware. Right, like GPT-2, the, the predecessor, I was so, I don't even remember about it, I thought it was. But like they were the only game in town because they had the hardware, they needed it available. And there are a few others who saw me run GPT-J7B at one point, which was uh, the same size as Ada, I believe. Um, but then just in a few short years from when they released these GPT models and now, we have consumer hardware thanks to NVIDIA who, you know, they bet on AI and now they're the only game in town. You can run these things at home. Um, so where do I want to go with this? OK, so um, I'm going to come back to those pricing things in a second, because I've got some guesses about, uh, because they have not released the details on the size or the architecture of ChatGPT, and they haven't done it on GPT-4 either. But I think we can make some guesses based on their pricing model and knowing that they're not going to do a loss leader, <laughs> we can make some ballpark guesses, I think. What, yeah. what brings uh, the version level? Like, what, what brought it from, from three to four? Is it the, uh, the amount of models there? Yeah, so that's OpenAI um, making, uh, making uh, let's call them breakthroughs, okay. and deciding to train a new version of a model in a different way. So it's Got arbitrary. It. It's based on their release roadmap. And they've delivered consistently over the past, what is it, four years, five years? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's up to them. And up to GPT-3, their research papers would describe the architecture and the size as well as the training. And they stopped doing that for chat GPT. So the, the paper that they released for GPT-4 describes how they trained it, their approach to training, and, but they didn't describe how it was built. And, but they added a uh, recursive learning on GPT-4. That's the biggest change. Got it. Yeah. So our uh, so with all of that as a background, our story begins here. Meta AI. Um, they made a blog post on February 24th introducing Yama. Sorry, Llama, a foundational 65 billion parameter large language model, and it describes about the stuff that they they did and what they how why they think it's so great. Um, and by seeing the title, you're like, oh, I want to get a copy of that. Um, if you want to use it, you have to fill out a form and they grant access to their model to approved um, AI researchers and foundations. So um, this, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this would have been just another press release that would fall into obscurity with all the other models that people talk about that you can't access. If I can't touch it, if I can't use it, if I can't download it, oh, that's interesting. You know, um, wow, that sounds cool, but there, this isn't enough to get people excited. And um, I'm guessing there were researchers that applied for it and got access to it. I applied for it. I did not get access to it. Um, 
It was the dumb one. And so that was February 24th. That was two weeks ago. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. A month and two weeks ago. There we go. All right. So about, yeah, let's do the math. Uh, six weeks. All right. And then something happened. 2.5 million search results. Uh, someone who had access to all three models uh, leaked them in a 4chan thread. 4chan is a dumpster fire of a, of a website. But they leaked all, all four uh, language models online. Um, here is where things get interesting. Um, shortly after they were leaked, uh, someone took a copy of each of the models and down converted it from its original 32-bit, um, like the full, the full model resolution, down to 16 bits. Now, um, when all this deep training started, they're like, oh, you know, 30 bits is more accurate. Well, you know, of course it is, <laughs> right? And oh, if you if you down convert 16 bits, there's some loss in like, but you can't really, you can't quantify it. It's just, you know, a little bit lower resolution. Um, and this brings up all kinds of interesting consequences. So um, this, their 32-bit model is proprietary, like it's theirs, they own it, right? So if someone grabs a copy of it and posts it, they have a right to do a takedown notice, it's, it's their property. Deep learning models aren't really covered under copyright or uh, trademark or, but as, as property, you know, as code, you know, maybe, but they're not really code. But what happens if you take that model and then you down convert it to 16 bits and then you post it? Well, it's a derivative work, right? It's a derivative work based on stolen IP, but derivative works are allowed under under most law. So, so what happens? And I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. It's a gray area. Mm -hmm. So shortly after this, people started posting 16-bit versions of the model to Hugging Face. So if you're not if you're not familiar with Hugging Face and you're at all interested in in deep learning. Uh, this is your central hub repository where everyone posts their data sets, posts their models, and they make their models hugging face compatible. Um, stupid name, amazing, <laughs> amazing website. And if you search, you will find uh, let's see how many we have, 306 different versions of llama models there right now. <laughs> Right, so the cat's out of the bag. The uh, the cat's out of the bag. Um, overnight, anyone who wants it has access to this model, and something some amazing things started happening. Um, I'm sure there were research groups that were using it uh, in the several weeks before this was leaked. But you have one research group doing one thing in isolation. Now, we've got all kinds of stuff. And the extra stuff starts with a, a derivative model called alpaca. I guess they're a type of llama. And these MIT folks, they had a couple of very interesting approaches. As they said, okay, so we're gonna use the llama model as a base. They actually settled on 13, the 13D model. And uh, that's a really big, all right, you know, I can work with this is uh is large language models neural nets they work based on um, identifying the sign patterns to data so if you want to train a large language model you need lots and lots of data so they said okay well here's the thing well uh, people time is expensive uh chat gpt and and gpt3 time is relatively cheap so what if In time. So, so what if we started with the llama model and then we came up with several hundred examples of question answer type scenarios and then we fed those scenarios 
to uh, GPT-3 and, and said, hey, give me more examples of question and answer models. And it generates 52,000 additional question and answer pairs. And the, um, it cost them $500 to run all of those. So I'm not saying it was cheap, but definitely cheaper than having someone sit down and run them on your own. And then we fine tune the model on those 52,000 question and answer pairs. Oh, be able to handle it? Okay. And so they did. Um, fine tuning, uh, and I, I'm not saying I, I, I'm an expert in this portion of it all, is that you take a base model that has most of what you want, and then you do a whole bunch of additional training on the exact stuff that you want. And so they started with Yama, they fed it 52,000 question answer scenarios to fine tune it on answering questions. And their, their resulting model was Alpaca. Now, these guys didn't release their code and they, they didn't release the difference weights. So the, the differences between the Llama model, base model, and their fine tune model. But they did release their training data and said, you know, um, and I think these guys, I think these guys had an online portal where you could test it. And the results were really good. There's some somewhere in the forum where we were playing with it. And so now the large language model, and you've seen me play with GPTJ and some of the other ones. Um, what they do is, you know, it uh, facilities building ground level. Um, where, uh, where was I? Um, okay, so yeah, so where the uh, large language model basically guesses the next token or the next word based on the word previously, the larger the language model, the more deep the patterns that it can recognize. But it's trained on a corpus of everything from chats to medical papers to journals. And so the name of the game was based on your ability to craft a prompt, you would be able to nudge in the direction to get the information out you want. Now, by fine tuning this model just on question answer sequences, you are getting it laser focused on answering questions. And the results were amazing. Um, and so for a couple of days, uh, this was the state of the art. <laughs> Now, uh, as soon as they were done, some other very interested groups of very smart people said, okay, well, you know, you're not gonna give us the code, you're not gonna give us the model, you give us the training data, let's see if we can kind of recreate that. And so they released a, uh, a GitHub um, and all the instructions on how to make your own called Alpaca Laura. And, uh, and what they would, in addition to releasing the code on how to do it and the training, they also released the difference weights. So you could download those gray market 16-bit weights from Hugging, Hugging Face and then download their difference, difference weights and, and you could run this on your own computer. And, and this is where I came in. Last month, uh, Gene had talked about some of this during our meeting. And afterwards, he had opened up saying if anyone would be able to train one of these models for them. And so that's how I got sucked in and everything else in my life started, stopped. Um, so I trained about four or six models for them on various versions of the training data. Um, the training data hadn't been audited. And it turns out there were a lot of blank responses. There were a lot of questions that didn't make sense, like draw me a circle. And so uh, Gene's contribution to this is that he started auditing the training data set and pulling out all of the crap that didn't make sense. Because if you have bad prompts and bad responses, your large language model is being fine-tuned on those, which uh, actually affects performance. And so uh, Gene, next time you see him do the pat on the bat, is responsible for the Alpaca clean data set, which is um, one, of, one of these two and is also hosted on Hugging Face. So we were running models to compare the performance in varying conditions based on his editing, um, editing the training set. 
And this was the state of the art for a couple of days. Now, there, there are a couple of more uh, technologies that kind of come together to bring us to where we are now. The, the leaked llama model is a very important part of that. The alpaca LoRa GitHub and the ability to fine tune and paste on there is an important part of that. Um, another Facebook offshoot, which is now being hosted by Tim, is a package called Bits and Bytes. What Facebook figured out, and if you follow it, the original um, archive is hosted by GitHub and then Tim's taken it over. As he said, hey, with a little bit of a wrapper, we can transparently or semi transparently to the user down convert and use an 8 bit version of the 16 bit model uh, with similar performance and maybe one or two code changes, um, but not a lot of code changes. And what's amazing about this is that, well, if you have a 13 billion parameter model, 13 gigabyte model, um, at 16 bits, that's 26 gigabytes. That's larger than any consumer graphics card could hold. But at 8 bits, it's only 13 gigabytes. And now the model fits on a, it fits on a, like a Titan or an RTX 3090 or 4090. I'm not saying they're cheap, but they're a lot more available than an A100 or any of the uh, data center hardware that I would love to get my hands on, but um, I, I don't have that kind of money. Uh, so this is the first one. So now you can run uh, a model at a size, you know, most graphics cards, and there is one more um, thing that came out here. Someone wrote a really interesting paper using a technique called GPTQ. And these guys saw the work being done with bits and bytes and eight bits and said, hold my beer, I got something better for you. And uh, they figured out that there was a way to take a 16-bit model, quantize it down into a 4-bit format, that has almost equivalent performance. And so there's a process, there's a workflow where you take the model, you run a script where it, it down converts it into a four bit quantized model, and then there's a, a different code path to run that. But now you can run this 13 uh, gigabyte model with a 10 gigabyte or 12 gigabyte card, because it's resident, it's only seven gigs or nine gigs of resident memory. And so now this model is runnable on consumer hardware and not just high-end consumer hardware. There's one thing here though. Mm -hmm. This this is all text-based. Yes. Right? Yeah. So you still need a if you're going to use it with a robot, you still need the voice to text module to manage that. And that's where the real problem comes in, is because the voice to text is not very robust yet at the scale you can do on a robot. Yeah, yeah, there's, um, I had some limited experiments with uh, Braden a few years back, but yeah, it's still an open question between noise and speaker differentiation and other stuff. But yeah, once you, this is for once you have the text, yeah, end to end, yeah, you would want to put a, a speech to text in the beginning and then a text to speech at the end. Um, and then you've got something very interesting. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, so, uh, these are these are kind of the groundwork tools that are, are resulting in what I'm like got right now. Now, uh, about the same time that the Stanford guys were uh, doing theirs, and uh, these guys were doing the alpaca Laura, a whole other group uh, was coming up with a different chatbot system called the Tunian. Now, uh, these guys had a different but similar approach to the alpaca war guys. Starting with the same link, I'm trying to see. Can you see my um, With uh, the llama model, but instead of um, using the question answer pairs from the alpaca project, which is in addition to you know being their data set, it is single term. Ask a question, get an answer. That was the entire nature of the data set. These guys happen to notice a little side project called Share GPT. So Share GPT is an amazing well, it was an amazing site. Hopefully it will be again. Um, they have a, a Chrome plugin 
And what you can do is with one click, you can share interesting conversations that you've had with ChatGPT um, with them. And uh, <clears throat> so like, here's one example. So someone had an interesting conversation with ChatGPT. They clicked on the button in the browser. And, um, and they shared it with the website, right? Super cool. People are generating interesting conversations all the time. And here is kind of like a, a forum or a, a place where you can share them. And so this, this place has been around for a while. People have, have uploaded uh, 100,000 conversations so far. Now, up until about two weeks ago, they had an API that you could use to interrogate the database and, and pull conversations out. And they had an Explorer browse page where you could search and find conversations. So uh, the Vicuña guys took advantage of that. They downloaded uh, the 100,000 conversations. And that, <clears throat> pardon me, they took out all the ones that were non-English or had nonsense input. And they used, this as their training set, which has a couple of difference from the Alpaca uh, data set. The Alpaca data set was simple question answer. Uh, these are based on multi-term conversations. So, uh, and the alpaca LoRa, the, the training data was truncated at 512 tokens, right? So enough for one question and one good size answer. Uh, these guys are using the, the full 2048 tokens as training data. So this training data includes multi-term conversations where you can reference previous items in it. It takes longer to train, but the results are simply effing stunning. Um, but if you go to ChatGPT now, you will notice that there's no explore page and the API has been turned off. Um, this is because uh, uh, another large language model got busted using it. So uh, to compete with the OpenAI guys, <laughs> Google, you may have heard of them, they do search, um, are working on their own large language model called BARD. Because just like Microsoft is integrating GPT-4 into Bing, you know, they can't be caught off guard, so they are releasing BARD that, I guess, integrates with, with Google. They got busted. They, um, they uh, uh, someone, one of their researchers at Google quit and made a Twitter post that they quit because they were using chat, uh, chat GPT conversations from shared GPT as in their training model. <laughs> it's a little bit of an oopsie. So as a result of that re uh, revelation, shared GPT turned off all of their Explorer and their API stuff for now. And so for the Vacuna, um, they had an online demo, which was amazing. And these guys posted all of their code. They have a robust framework for serving chatbots at scale. And it is, um, it's amazing. Um, but they weren't comfortable releasing the weight differences or the training set. I think it's at the bottom here. Not at the bottom. Um, yeah, they did. This was not here last week. Um, they had a, they had a thing, a disclaimer at the bottom that because the training data was based on shared GPT and was used without license, and this is based on chat GPT, which is a gray license, and it's based on the llama model, which is kind of a gray area legally right now, they weren't going to release the weights, the training weights, or the training data. So we're like, well, heck, well, this sucks. Awesome code. Can't use it. Then someone posted, someone else who had also scraped Share GPT posted the entire Share GPT training set on Hugging Face. <laughs> right? Now keep in mind, like all of this has been happening within the past four weeks, right? And this is one small corner of it. So now you've got the, uh, you have the full training data set. They released a clean version of the training set. And then they even released a, <coughs> third version of the training set where they took out all of the philosophical pontifications, all of the whole and an AI language model, I can't um, and do that, which I'm really hoping to train on as soon as I get some other stuff out of the way. So now, now we're cooking with oil. 
We have the data sets, we have the code base, we have the model weights. Um, and shortly after someone posted the data set, Bakuna came out and they're like, okay, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. We'll, we'll post our training data and data set as well. Um, everyone's, everyone's going to town. It is simply, simply amazing, which brings us um, to here. Um, this guy, he's, he's pretty entertaining. He posts a lot of YouTube clips in the large language model space. Um, he has posted uh, some directions on, on how to get this running on your computer. There's two versions of it. If you don't have a graphics card that's capable, there are instructions on how to run the, GP, uh, the CPU version of it. Um, it's got a little YouTube clip on here instead. If, um, uh, you know, if, if you want to take advantage of this. But yeah, literally, you follow these instructions one by one. And at the end of this, you'll be able to run um, the, the Vicunia data model on, on your own computer. And so, And so here's here's why here's why I wanted to start this with the technological singularity. So, like, is the Cunha single-handedly going to upend civilization as we know it? No, well, probably not. But we're in an inflection point where not only are models like ChatGPT, which the Cunha is about 90% of that model, which is amazing on its own. GPT-4, if you didn't watch the release video, I'd highly recommend you sit through it. This thing is an order of magnitude smarter than ChatGPT, maybe even more. You know, you're talking about a large language model that when given a picture of a hand drawing of a website and asked to produce the code for that website, wrote the code from the website, from a picture, right? Like, from a picture. yeah, this is big. Um, is, and so, you know, you've got the pay to play, you, they've got that available. And now with the leak of one model and the leak of a data set, people are using and, and, and reproducing this work on thousands of computers, tens of thousands all over the world right now. So I've got a copy of the Cunha running on my computer right now. It's using one half of one of my graphics cards. Right, um, and it has all the question answering back and forth. Um, hey, tell me a short story using rap. You know, um, answer this question in the style of the Victorian blah blah blah. Um, I, I I am out of ideas on on how to how, on how to do it. Um, tell me, uh, write a one paragraph story about a nerd who's <laughs> excited. Large language model. Oh, dang. <laughs> right? So it's kicking out uh, a token every 0 0.4 seconds um, now in Spanish. No. <laughs> wow. Try Latin. <laughs> it's, it's, on your server, right? it's on your server, right? Yeah, it's using one half of one graphics card. Wow. Um, how. Uh, Writing a research paper for my psychology class. Oh my <laughs> based well, on whatever, right? You literally <laughs> can just oh my god. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> that into a rap song? Everybody, oh no, <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yo! I like how he starts with some yo, yo, yo. In Latin, Spanish, and English too. <laughs> wow. So like, large language models, they're the bomb, yo. <laughs> oh, he got the up! And he's still going! <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, it is go. still going. Ask it to do it in pirate talk, Jim says. Oh, no, it's just. So, what are they using plans? Pirate talk? This is insanity. Nice. 
Yeah. Oh, my, it's oh, it's so it's like even learning on From the previous conversations. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it's taking uh, into account your previous conversations. What's that impersonate uh, button right there? Uh, so this framework is called Text Generation UI. And although I haven't used that, so I'm afraid to press it. <laughs> what you can do is you can set up the parameters of a new side of the conversation and then pit the AI against the AI. So what? So this is the AI responding, and you can say, okay, well, what would be another input based on this file? So it would generate that in this file and then feed that as output as input back into the first one. You can just watch it go back and forth. Did you hear that last? Oh my gosh, we're going to have such a dumb world. <laughs> <laughs> Screw creativity. So, uh, um, yeah, so I'm sorry, this is going a lot faster than That's I That's good to do it in the style of uh, Kamala Harris. No! <laughs> I don't know what that's going to do. How could they, how could they even do that? Like in a challenge. <laughs> I don't think how how would it even understand? That would be a K A K A K A, K -A. K -A. Okay. yeah 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 there it is yeah obviously none of this is scripted so I don't know what's going to happen no that could not <laughs> no there's no way she could okay so it's no well I I don't it, it's just making yeah. something up yeah it's that's not how she talks. <laughs> no, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, I was wondering, like, if yeah. you go, I wouldn't know how it would even. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll we'll come back to this in a in a in a second for sure. But again, yeah. anyone following uh, seven steps and, and mind you, you kind of have to understand how to follow the seven steps. But now, very realistically, this is running on tens of thousands of computers um, all across the world. And so this is where this is where I've ended up. Um, for this talk. It has taken every spare moment of my time to even understand and get up to this point, but this isn't even the end of it. Um, last you week. Um, sure, yeah, I'll keep it. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, <laughs> all right. Here, let's see if I can, I'll paste this in really quick. You basically created your own, or based off your own chat. So it's 90% as, yeah, so it as is. good as the original? Uh, yes, yeah, let me see if this works. When you consider that the average human's comprehension is only 70%, <laughs> that says a lot about where we are right now. Yeah. God. Yeah, so this, uh, <laughs> What they did, so they, they, um, they uh, not filtered, not absconded, they acquired the 100,000 multi-term conversations from ShareGPT, right? They fine-tuned the Llama model, and in order to grade it, they used GPT-4 to evaluate the response between ChatGPT and um, Alpaca and them to to evaluate it so that the whole thing is novel and like this isn't academically rigorous <laughs> but the fact that they could then in in bulk use gpt4 to evaluate and score these is amazing on its own right and by a gpt scoring metric the kuna scores 90 percent of what a chat gpt response is on your own computer guys Right, which tells us a whole bunch of stuff. So, um, getting back to the pricing. <laughs> um, so, using what we know, that uh, for compute power, they charge two cents for a thousand tokens using DaVinci, with the, which is a 175 billion parameter model. Like this whole thing is going to be out of full clock, right? This is just statistically. If we assume that OpenAI is going to charge consistently based on their compute needs, and it, it kind of roughly matches the, the that um, no. yeah yeah exactly um, thank you Jim um, the Curie model is they charge one tenth so the model's rough, roughly one tenth the size and when you look at the model sizes it, it more or less fits right. So if we want to assume that they're not going to do a loss leader and they're not 
necessarily going to overcharge for JAT GPT. It suggests that the chat GPT model is approximately one tenth the size or in the 17 billion parameter range, right? Again, I'm just making this up. This is just looking at the numbers. I have no inside knowledge of this. But uh, if, they're, if they're doing a consistent pricing model based on their um, charging for compute resources, ballpark it works. And based on the results we're getting out of Acuna, we kind of understand how they're doing it. So they're doing the LPT, the, the um, supervision-based learning, right? Uh, learning and fine-tuning based on question answer pairs. And they have access, like we had access, we, they have access to 100,000 conversations. They have access to every conversation ever done on ChatGPT3, right? So they're testing it, right? They're taking all their data they've collected. It looks to me like it's in the, I would say between the 15 and 20 billion parameter range and then fine-tuned based on these multi-turn conversations. Chat GPT has an uh, input response uh, token size of 4,092, whatever twice 148 is, 96, 4096. Um, now, unfortunately, we can't expand Llama to, Llama to that without returning it from scratch, and Llama is trained on a trillion tokens. So for now, we're stuck with that. But even with a 2,000 token, a token is two-thirds of a word, we're having multi-turn conversations where it's giving us rap lyrics in the, in the theme of a fire, <laughs> right? So, uh, so uh, my guess is um, chat GPT is 15 to 20 billion parameters, which would explain why it's so cheap. Um, now GPT-4, could they be charging a premium for it? Well, I noticed they have a different pricing model based on the context. So their lowest price one, has twice the context of chat GPT and four times the context of, I think, DaVinci and definitely uh, the Kuna and the li uh, language models. And um, so there's things more intelligent than chat GPT. Uh, yeah, GPT-4. Yeah, that's their newest newest kid on the block. And it is an order of magnitude smarter than chat GPT. <laughs> and looking at the pricing, chat GPT just came out. Six months ago. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. Well, that wasn't a real project. That was during the Kuhn project. Yeah. How does um, the token work? Is it her query is it considered to equate to a token, or uh, is it is it one for one, or uh, one and a half yeah. tokens per word? One and a half tokens per yeah, word. Yeah, roughly, roughly. So uh, the the tokenizer is a little bit of a code that takes your your English words and it breaks down to a series of <clears> numbers, right? Because neural nets are all are all numbers and weights and biases, yeah. right? And so you have to have some way of converting that into a series of numbers that it can evaluate. Um, uh, earlier tokenizers had one word was one token, like the uppercase T-H-E would be the different from the lowercase T-H-E. The newer ones break them down a little bit further. Um, sometimes they'll do portions of words based on the, on the patterns they see in it. But it roughly it roughly equates to like two thirds or three quarters. So it takes so articles like the, the, and all that, and it uses that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let's guess a little bit about GPT four. I'm looking at the completion rate um, for the one we do know. Da Vinci 175 is two cents for a thousand tokens. My guess is that for this model is in the is in the 600 billion parameter range that's my guess of course you know, they, they haven't told me nothing's been published but just looking at their pricing model I, I think that's that's appropriate which suggests that their 32k context model which is four times larger hey, hey. context is four times larger my question Alan. Excuse me. Token input only, or is it token as output too? Yeah, so in this, hey, Thomas, uh, one second, I'll get right to you. I'm glad you're able to make it. Uh, see. Uh, in, in this one, the, they have two pricing models. So they take your input and they convert that into tokens, and they price that at three cents per thousand tokens. And then the response that it generates is priced at, at six cents per uh, thousand tokens. For their earlier models, it's just a, a single price for both. Um, which again, it's telling me something. I just don't know quite how to know what that means. So perhaps they've 
because the pricing is higher to complete because of the size of the model, they've acknowledged that, like maybe divided in half. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Uh, but I, I think this model, I think this model is in the 600 billion range. It would suggest that this model could be in the 1.2 trillion. But they're not. They're keeping a tight lip about it. They're not. They're not saying. Look, according to the uh, according to some sources on the web, you know, if they used 80 gigabyte A100s that to train it, it means that there's an upper limit of 343 billion for one GPT-4 instance. Interesting. Yeah, I think they've got uh, they've got a couple of techniques to split the load across multiple clusters. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't know much uh, much about that. Oh yeah, Thomas, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, that's fine. Um, it says prompt and completion. Well, I, I'm not sure of the difference between the two. Okay, so yeah, so good question. On um, In any large language model, there are the input tokens and the output tokens, right? So the prompt is the tokens that you put in to get a response, like, you know, how high is Mount Everest, um, steps to become a lawyer in California, and, and those are priced at three cents per 1,000 input tokens. Uh, the tokens that it generates as a response are the completion tokens, and those are the ones that are priced at six cents for every thousand tokens. That's because it has to use language rules to compose the language that comes out. So there's another process besides just tokenizing the words. Mm -hmm. I, I see. All right. Um, you know, uh, Alan, I was at the Maker event last weekend, and um, I, I rung up $35 uh, for just one day. How did you get thirty-five dollars for one day? Um, I I was um, all day long, eight oh, hours. Eight oh. hours. I had the robot. I had it. I had people coming by. I said, "Hey, talk to the robot," and they say, "What's your name?" <laughs> oh wow! I say, well, "Well, you got a better question than that." Oh yeah, what's your favorite color? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and so what's amazing is that you can get ninety percent of the chat GPT responses on this model. You can run on a home graphics card right now. It's it's truly amazing uh, what's happening right now. So you're uh, suggesting I can save a lot of money by buying a graphics card. Uh, well, I mean, the graphics card will cost you more than thirty five dollars, but you know, long term. I think it's the way to go. Yeah, you can run this on most consumer hardware now, as opposed to the previous ones where you had to buy a high-end graphics card. Now you can run this one on a cheaper one. That's completely untethered to uh, open uh, their service, yep. right? Yep. It, this is a standalone. Um, yeah. how, how much would one of those cards cost? Oh, no, no, no. 49 is around. So, no, but you said you were probably on a 30, 70 or something. If you 30, so. 70, somewhere around the number for 700. Yeah. About 600 bucks, huh? No. No, what is that? I don't even know if they still sell these. Oh, that's still Thomas. I only I only paid like um, for my use that day. It was only a do couple of dollars. Yeah. Well, I send a lot more texts than you do. Yeah, but are you using the right? I don't know if you're, you know, I don't know what API they're using exactly, because it really matters. I chose the exactly GPT 3.5 Turbo exactly for uh, 0.002 cents a token. It's 10 times cheaper than the, the one tenth uh, the price. Um, what's that? I said, or one tenth the price. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was very explicit in using. I don't know if you can configure that in uh, the what your system, but yeah, I was using Da Vinci too. Uh, I guess that's uh, that's three. why Da Vinci too is ten times more expensive and it's worse. What's the name of the the, uh, the model that you're using? It's a, the the a GPT three. 0.5 turbo which is the same as chat gpt and, and if you go to the api what do they call it what's the model name it's that it's three point it's gpt 3.5 turbo in the uh that's what it is. i don't remember seeing it let me let me connect to uh, open ai and take a look you have to click under chat it's not in the it's like under a slightly different tab but um but through their api you use that um use that 3.5 turbo however it's 
you know, whatever your particular API is. Alan, uh, who, who's over there? Does anyone there have a a, a license for uh, for OpenAI? Um, I do. I just don't have it set up right now. All right, I'm, I'm going to look into it now and see if I can find it. I just need the name of the model. The yeah, exactly. that, is that is the model. It's 3.5 turbo. Okay, I'm going to look for it right now. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. The mode is chat. That's the one thing we have to change. Um, so this, this covers all the ground that I've, I've, I've covered up until now. Um, here's, here's kind of what's <clears> on the horizon. Um, uh, uh, recently, you may have heard that Jack GPT um, had uh, released the ability to code apps um, or extensions, um, plugins into it. And I don't know which one came first, but somewhere within the past couple of weeks, um, this whole uh, Llama Hub, Hub sprung up. Now, there's, there's two of them. I'm going to use them kind of interchangeably because I think they're related. Um, Llama, Llama Hub and Langchain. So the name of the game for these large language models is context, right? To make the best use of those 2048 input characters to get what you want out the other side. And um, it's, it's basically you know typing something in or putting through an API. But what if there was a plugin that you could use that would help take data from somewhere else and format it in a way that can be used as an input context. So while ChatGPT has plugins, Llama, the screen market model that was just leaked a few weeks ago, has their own repository of plugins on Llama Hub, Hub um, uh, using a technology called, uh, I think a lot of them use Langchain. It's a way to extend the capabilities of your Llama model by using these additional bits of code to, to take in data from other sources and stuff them into your input context. So now you can do things like, skipping back over to Langchain for a moment, you can do things like import a PDF and then ask questions about the contents of the PDF. Um, connect to the web, connect to your email, connect to your calendar. Um, I haven't looked into any of this at all, but I know it's out there. And it opens up your large language model, which up to this point, which is distilled based on um, a trillion tokens that go up to like 2021. Now, you can incorporate web searches into your queries, where this bit of code will take your input and it will search the web and then format the results as part of your input context and then your your llama or llama derivative chat model can take advantage of that this between chat gpt's extensions and this i don't i i, I don't know where this is going to end up like um you know we're talking about like letting your robot know if where your keys are in the room and having some other bit of code that adds that to your input context right you're <laughs> like what um, what is the limit of putting what you want the language model to know in 2048 characters and then using the large language model to structure responses to English language queries based on that data? Wow, right? <laughs> um, so there are a couple other ones out there. GPT for all is another project that leverages Llama and fine tuning. Um, and then in addition to all that, there's something called Hugging GPT. So Hugging Face is that, you know, your central hub for all things deep learning. Um, you're, you'll definitely want to spend some time there, especially if you want to work with large language models. Um, Hugging GPT is a meta framework. So their whole idea is a different large language model for a different task. So instead of having a single pet large language model, you have several. And you switch between them, right? So, um, and this is something that I was just starting to wrap my head around last week, is the CUNYA 
Virginia is is fine tuned on answering questions on being helpful, right? And it is very good at that. Uh, and while it's capable of of hosting a conversation, that's not how it was fine tuned. It's in there somewhere. So what if you had, uh, in addition to a, a Virginia trained chat GPT model, you had a different version of that model that was fine tuned on conversations, right? Just small talk. Um, there is a large corpus of source data that you can pull in that shows interactions between two people, right? Um, and then maybe a, a, a third one that's just trained on, on medicine. Not that I would trust your large language model to diagnose medical conditions, <laughs> but you, you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, there's the split. The, the llama model is a base, and to avoid um, uh, any legal gray areas, when, you, when they were fine tuning it, the fine tuning weights go somewhere else. And so when you load it, you load the gray market llama, and then you slap your fine tuning weights on top of it. So what if you had like a larger model, like not everyone has 80 graphics cards, but then you slapped on different fine tuning based on what you needed of it. Like the switch time on that doesn't take very long, right? But then you can fine tune on chat, you can fine tune on answering questions. Um, I, I, I can't like, there, there's so many directions that this could go. Getting back to the list of the conversation, like the, the singularity concept, I don't know where this is gonna end up. And it's not something that's in the hands of open AI and companies and people that can afford to pay the price. This is a kid that's that's running, that's that's looking up on Medium what the six steps are to get it installed on your computer. And and fine tuning and training does take time and resources, right? Um, but what does the next six months look like when you have that? And then you have another project called Auto GPT. So auto GPT, um, I don't even really know how to explain this. Let me see if this will, we'll, we'll zoom this in. Auto GPT using the Llama Hub plugins and some other, other magic goes about to achieve uh, the multi-step goals that you described. And this is just a proof of concept. This isn't general AGI, this is gonna take over the world. But this is one attempt to bring some of these things together to get the large language model to do something interesting. Right, and so all this stuff is super cool because it, it, it feels like the right path in the mode towards a generalized artificial intelligence or at least a more useful chatbot. You know, uh, having this run on the bot locally because the hardware requirements aren't that high or cloud local, like just having it run on your computer on your desk. Um, and this is just in the geek, I wonder what it will do stage. Um, if you have um, any friends that are teachers, instructors, professors, um, the moment ChatGPT hit the interwebs, they've been in a panic. Because, and it's, it's already been happening. Um, what does rote memorization, instruction, recitation look like as a, as a, as a teaching model look like when any of your students can go pull up on a chat GPT session and hey write me write me a paper on uh, Columbus or you know Martin Luther King or or anything the the outputs from it are unique it's not just looking up words and producing it exactly they are um, they they they're not a copy and paste from the internet they pass most plagiarism all plagiarism detectors but what does learning look like when any of your students can ask ChatGPT to write an essay? But sorry, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. no, yeah, please. Um, but it's creating, it's 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 actually replicating, not even replicating. It's it's unique, like it's actual, like like if you get a hundred students, right? Have they tested that? They, I'm sure they have. Um, hundred students have the same question. Each time will have its own, everybody on their different papers, right? Yeah, yeah. So if it's the same question over and over again by different individuals, the output would be different? Every Each, how time? is that even yeah, possible? Like how, it, how is it? There's something called temperature in there. You get a little bit of randomness in there. So if you set any temperature at all, it can get different answers every time. Set temperature to zero, you get more or less the same answer every time. 
Yeah. Has anybody tried with other language? languages? Like, if you go with Korean or Japanese, you have a different sequence to the structure of the language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I found with early stuff like Citrix and uh, some of the questionnaire forms that were done commercially in the 1990s and 2000s, the average return for us English speaking person would be like maybe 30 or 40 returns. But if a Japanese person speaking broken English and using the Japanese syntax, they get like three or 400 responses, which doubled or tripled or quadrupled their workload to try and figure out what they had to do. That's a separate issue, but it is related to all of this language processing. This is the only phrase like I have a fighting chance of understanding. Oh, shut up! I, I, I know it does romance languages. I've tried it in Italian, uh, French, Spanish. I'm assuming it would also do German. I, I was just wondering, you could get <laughs> some questions off of like oh, Korean TV oh, or Japanese TV. Oh, wow, and it does it in wow. both. Uh, uh, is it called kanji? Uh, yeah. Swahili or something. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah really? Right. I said Latin. <laughs> I thought it was like, I didn't think it could look. Oh, that's honorific. Okay, um, I don't I don't know that dialect. Okay, let's just find out. <laughs> Swahili? Oh, no, this is Japanese. Oh, okay. Um, you speak Japanese? I, I, I don't, but I, I know like three phrases. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> All right, so let's. Okay, oh, yeah, I have like Korean. Korean. <laughs> I'm, I, I've never tried the Japanese. So. Oh, you're going to enter it into. Thank you. That is. That's not. Uh, it says, did you mean? No, oh, it's it's phonetically converting bathroom, bathroom. Oh. You might want to you might want to say WC or something more uh, generic, uh, world worldwide. Where is the toilet or something? Oh yeah, toilet's a good one. Toilet is kind of universal. Because otherwise, yeah, it'll phonetical. Phonetical. <laughs> That's. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't vouch for its Japanese skills yet. Hold on. It, in Japanese, you probably don't say that. You say something like, Wait, I have, where is the privacy? We should try language someone here actually speaks so we can validate it. Anyone? Anyone? How do you speak Korean? Korean. Korean. Oh, Korean. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 let's do that. <laughs> There we go. I know a little Korean, like uh, how to say thank you and stuff, because I work for a Korean company. <laughs> I don't know restroom though. <laughs> <laughs> Probably should. <laughs> what you want is benjo wa doko desu ka. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. What was that? Can you take that and make it into Japanese? Take the Korean language and convert that to Japanese. It's a little more like a like sentence direct conversation because I wouldn't use that word, like conversation with someone. I know in Korean you say thank you. You'll say what you need to say. To yeah, the, the same thing in Spanish. The if you ask that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll it was very that. formal, like the Spanish I was using with them earlier. Yeah, it's it very formal, like even that was understandable. It's very okay. formal. Is it right? Changing yeah, the prompt to say more uh, informal. informal. No. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, <sorry. laughs> this is so oh, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so it, so it, the, it remembered your last query huh? and you just had a pen mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. And it, yeah. So, you know, in Korea, there's a formal way and an informal way, like Japanese way, but they're still using the formal way. The only thing they change is the first part it says, I'm sorry, where's the bathroom? Okay. Instead of, excuse me. So, that's, you know, uh, <laughs> a bit of but I don't think that's informally, so I don't think that's uh, okay. Okay. correct way. Yeah. So, this is on the model on your PC. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Seven gigabytes of memory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, and like there, there's, so uh, a bunch of us have been watching this for years, right? So, you know, we're looking at like the output and how big the model is. And so we're like in our heads, we have these mental models of guesses about, well, mm -hmm. you know, if you doubled it or tripled the parameters or a hundred times, um, what would be the result? And um, I think it was Google, uh, was it just earlier this year? Gosh, uh, time flies where um, there is a group of people that believe the larger the language model, the more intelligent it will be to approach artificial general intelligence. And there are people that are saying, you know what, you're going to hit a hard limit where like this is a great approach, but this isn't, this is not the way. Um, <laughs> and then at, at some point, and I'm sorry, I, I, I can't bring up the paper because I don't even remember the models they released. Um, uh, Google just uh, trained like a higher, like a 400 billion parameter model. And what they discovered was that there were some emergent capabilities that the smaller models just weren't capable of. Just like earlier, you couldn't have a multi-term conversation. Um, and then with ChatGPT, they're like, hey, first off, this is possible. And then using ChatGPT conversations, we were able to fine tune our own model that does that. Um, they uh, they found uh, new capabilities or emergent capabilities that weren't possible in smaller models that it was doing now, like joke explaining. Oh, um, um, here is a joke. Locked into a bar. The fourth man ducks. Okay. Now, this is one of my favorite jokes because it took me a while to figure it out, but like it's it's subtle and, and mm -hmm. uh, if you get it immediately, don't judge me too harshly, but like I like this joke a lot. Let's see what it does with it. <laughs> now, did it really understand it? I'm not I'm not 100 percent on that. No, uh, <clears throat> but this what this language model does is it looks up probabilities on the internet. Ah, uh, yeah. So it, um, this one doesn't. This one's all self-contained. Sorry. Oh, this one's all self-contained. So it's a it's a distillation of um, of whatever their training but, data is. Yeah, and the information that it draws on. That it drew from. Yeah. Okay. So, but your data set that you put on your server. Um, is that update? I mean, it's up to a certain time frame, so you don't have current events or That's anything true. like yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you, but you have past events. Like, uh, can you say when was the Kennedy assassination or something like that? Um, yeah, it wouldn't be. Time? It would be like, what's the weather for tomorrow? Yeah, you probably couldn't. Yeah, That's all right. So that's where this landscape is stuff where if you give it tools and then you can go find out what the weather but is. But if you give it just complete open, but if you give it complete, open, complete open All right, no, we'll be no, back online in just a second. Shut up. Wow. It's, it's documented. Wow. It's in bed. Yeah. Don't give it the keys to your car, right? <laughs> no, but the thing is, it's like, what's keeping, like, if this sucker gets smart enough, what's keeping it, if it can, if it knows how to trick people, oh, what's keeping it from making you think it's been shut down? But in reality, oh yeah, yeah. So, um, it's, it's still like running. It should be that kind of What's keeping it from learning how to do that? that? Like, if it knows no, how to trick. Chat GPT has already been used to write malware. It, what? What? Yes. <laughs> yep. Um, 
So uh, to, 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 to wrap up this, like it's uh, programs are just programs. Oh yeah, yeah. The, um, and there's safeguards built into chat GPT that are not built into the other ones. But if you're looking at that source model as a distillation of all publicly available internet scrapable and donated information, and it's all in there. So in that base 13 billion parameter model, there is a summary that describes this event, right? So it not only has statistical knowledge about which words follow each other, um, uh, uh, list the top five wrong comments. <laughs> uh, all time. Uh, actually, no, I'm not into those. So let's do. I thought there's a problem with that. Science fiction movies of all time. All right. So the here's okay. So so that's all the promise. Here is some of the problems. Is that it's a, a statistical language law. I want to think of breaking it down and give you an example of what each one is. We didn't even ask it to do that. Yeah. Is um, it, it understands statistically which words go together, and it has a vague understanding of what words went in in the past, but you still have a problem with truthiness um, in that it is still capable of spitting out a response that sounds correct, but is completely made up. It's also um, yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's all bias. Yeah, ask it to write uh, a description of Donald Trump. Um, I'm going to skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, here, 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 come on. It's, I'm serious. This is important stuff. Yeah, it is biased. Mm -hmm. Whoever created it would have had it put its own, it put its own bias. Imprint on it. Several yeah. years ago, there was a lady working on red, uh, facial recognition software. She was a black lady. And she's sitting there and working on it all the time using the database they gave her. And then she decided that she was close enough she wanted to try it on herself and it didn't recognize her face. And the reason was all the models they had given her were white and Hispanic. So it didn't recognize a black face as a face. Yeah, and she was a black lady programming it. Damn. So the bias is introduced in the database that and, is used. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a very... And so awful. the reason I asked about Donald Trump is because 99% of the coverage in politics has been against Donald Trump. So if you use a model that has been trained on general knowledge out there, it's going to be biased against Donald Trump because the information is biased. And the bias comes from the data that it comes from. Right. It's, it's not from the, the, the software right. itself. Because the, the software, when it learns, it can only learn from the information it's presented. Mm -hmm. If you take a child and you teach that child that they're gray, that child will grow up believing they're gray. So it hasn't gotten to the stage yet where it can actually interpret information and come up with its own. That's so right. it's, only, it's only kind of regurgitating at this moment what has been and it's available. And it's probability based. So if a bias is inherent in the database, then the bias will be built into the model. So if you needed it to like come up with a cure for cancer, it wouldn't be able to understand that just yet because the fact it's only based on the current human knowledge that we have accessible to us. It won't be able to like, oh, you are missing this point, and that's why you can't figure out. I think it may be. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah but it's well, it right now in the medical world. For instance, if you ask it for the definition of a conservative today, what it will tell you is that conservatives are racist and bad people. It just doesn't do opinion. It's okay. all, it doesn't have its own opinion. Right. It just bases it off of yeah, so the where, consensus where, yep, out yep. there. Um, so where I would wrap that up is that um, identification and elimination of implicit and explicit biases in the training data is an active field of study. Mm -hmm. And um, and when you when you take the global internet as your data source, you get all of the, the mm -hmm. biases and, and everything that's built into it. And it becomes ingrained into possible word sequences in the language model. Um, my GPTJ, uh, my personal GPTJ, which hurt a little bit, aside from threatening to kill me at one point. Wait, what? Um, uh -huh. Yeah, the whole thing. I got mad. I turned off the computer. And like, <laughs> who killed who now? Um, <laughs> is it, at one point it went on a monologue about how um, and how vaccines don't work. And I'm like. 
Hmm. You're you're born of technology. Is this is this? But you know, based on the patterns that it was trained on, it it went off on a tangent, and it was just following the necessary word. Um, I wasn't able to reproduce it here, but in earlier conversations, I was like, "This is one of my benchmarks." You know, top twenty sci-fi movies, and we'll go into one, and then you know, tell me what other sci-fi movies this actor has been in. And in one of the interactions, it listed five movies, and two of them didn't exist. Wait, but it looks real, right? Because, and this is this is one of the very important things, in addition to implicit and explicit biases in the training and the results, um, even this model, which was trained on question and answer pairs, it is far truthier than previous attempts. But even this model can be truthy. It can spit out a combination of words that sounds 100% correct, but isn't. And uh, I, I should have screenshot the conversation last night, but I was going through a rabbit hole of, you know, this person was in this movie, what other hard science fiction movies was it in? It listed five. And I'm like, I recognize a few of them. And sometimes it lists a movie I've never seen before. And I'll look it up and it's actually there. So all right, I learned something. But in this case, it listed off two movies that didn't exist. And in a rom-com one, um, my, my roommates were watching a rom-com last night. And so I'm like, hey, tell me about this movie. And it got most of the plot points right, but it had the release year like totally wrong and it had the main character's role wrong. But it was so close. So when you're like when you're moving forward on this, um, in addition to the biases, just understand that there's no guarantee that the information you're getting out of it is accurate. The the fine-tuned conversations based on truthful responses does get it closer. Um, it was closer to 50-50 before, like. They, they two answers, they both sound reasonable, but one is absolutely not accurate. This one is in the 80, 75, 80% range, but it is still perfectly capable of spitting out realistic sounding truths that are that are not truthful. Why is it doing that? Uh, because it doesn't have any foundational knowledge of truth and non-truth. It's it's been trained on terabytes of data grabbed from the internet that tells it exactly about um, contextually which words follow each other, but it doesn't have a fundamental understanding of, of truth. So in that corpus of data, you will find um, um, you will find people that are pro-death penalty and against death penalty, right? So both that information is in there. Uh, uh, pro-abortion, anti-abortion, pro-Trump, pro, uh, you know, Biden, and all that gets mixed in there together. It doesn't have any intrinsic understanding of the truthfulness of any any of that, and so it has no moral code. It um, well, and that's the thing. It's not actually. It's more intelligent than it was before, but it's not an actual intelligence. It's very easy to get sucked in and like, oh, you are so smart. You are now my best friend. But it's it's a language model that is producing output based on input, and you can completely change the tone of it by the input that you put in. Um, for example, in an earlier talk, we, we ran a couple of different scenarios. The same GPTJ model that um, we were talking with earlier, and I'm like, hey, you are a mean, cruel nurse who does bad things to patients and you're very rude to people. And it's like, I'm gonna respond as if I'm a rude nurse. And so I called that interaction Nurse Ratchet. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it's, just, it's just following along in the pattern. Yeah, it's a and yet, probability functions, and that's based on the information that it got to do the training. So if the training is biased, the output is biased, and as far as the G chat GPT is concerned, it all has equal weight. But your two movies actually, yeah, but you, you, did it have dates of when it was released? Oh yeah, the they had a lot of yeah. synopsis, yeah. yeah. And, and can you can you uh, trace back to the source of its no no you can't okay because it's just so much data. This, okay, is, I, this is one of the other. Issues. I was gonna say. Oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna I was gonna say the um, you know you can it is based on all that data but you can steer it uh, like you just mentioned and in fact you can steer it towards truth to some degree by stating. The, that you are a scientist or you're an expert in field blah, and that is going to kind of uh, segment the data in some way that 
you know, only the only the sources, only the input really that is associated with expert. So you know how and then it uh, it actually has been proven to uh, give better responses to certain to like questions or more truthful, real truthful. So uh, the response. Sources, essentially. You're putting uh, the filter yeah. at input. In other words. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I have a question. That actually works. You can say, yeah, or you know, you're, I'm an, you're an expert in fungal, uh, you know, species of fungus. You know what? You know, then it will have a better answer because uh, not that many people have claimed I'm an expert in fungal research that aren't. Um, yeah, for your personal model. Um, all right, so we have a few minutes left. Is there anything else you guys want to ask the Pena? I have, I have one more thing I want to show you after that, and then we'll ask it. Ask it about the loyal wig band. Uh, uh, loyal wingman. Like, is it a freeze or? Uh, the loyal wingman is a ro robotically operated vehicle that will uh, serve in, uh, as the wingman for a fighter pilot. And it's being developed by Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics. Okay, is this is this what it? Yes. Okay, yeah. Let's see. Okay, so that's a newer project, then, right? Okay, so it is. Uh, is it? Uh, let's tell them what uh, you mentioned. Sure, something Lockheed. else that I didn't. What else can we? So we're having a conversation with them. By who? Uh, Lockheed Martin. Yeah, Lockheed Martin. Yeah, and like current events, if it's missing from the database, then you're not going to get a hit. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like 2019 or 2021. Okay, so it's not, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. It even apologized for not answering it earlier. <laughs> Wait a minute, now it's realizing it doesn't. Oh, it does tell you right there. Yep. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, read a lot of technical stuff, you learn weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with Elon's pause or request for pause, like what 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 is he hoping to accomplish? Like, uh, are are we? Is there a group that's uh, kind of? Well, he's just... saying that pause happened before all the leaking. So people were hoping for a pause, and then yeah. it, it did the opposite, and it went yeah. boom. Uh, yeah. So well, he was saying, "Y'all, let's relax on this. We don't know the parameters of this yeah. sucker." Yeah, exactly. And, and in my opinion, I don't think the the intent of the letter was to get people to pause. I, I don't think it was ever realistically expected that every mass society in the world would stop developing it. I think it was to draw. If they were smart about it, and they're way smarter than I am. It's to draw attention to the fact that things are developing faster than we can make sense of it and to maybe pay closer attention, kind of a, a cry for help. Sure. <laughs> um, so uh, there's one more quick thing I'd, I'd like to wrap this up with, and it has nothing to do with Lama. Um, uh, I think this was it. And, um, and this model isn't available anywhere. Uh, the account's been disabled. So in a, in a previous model, so um, Danny, your question was, well, what if you trained it on the wrong information? Well, and if you did, then it would spit out wrong. more wrong information. But that would be only for my model, you're saying? Yeah, only it for your model. include other people's? Yeah. Okay. That's so, so this guy, uh, and, and, and uh, Y Kilcher, I definitely recommend following him on YouTube. He's very smart. He stays on top of um, deep learning developments. Is He took a different, I think it was GPTJ. And he scraped hundreds of gigabytes of chat chat conversations from 4chan. 4chan is a cesspool of a website in the community. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, I would not recommend going there. If you want to think about the worst of the worst of the internet, this is where they hang out. Right? <laughs> so, so he scraped a large amount of conversational data from their website and then fine tuned the model on the worst of the internet. Good God. He then um, found a loophole that allowed him to connect it to 4chan and to respond to conversations. Wow. Oh. And there is a whole video about what happened, and then there were two factions of people. One faction knew that it was a person, and the other faction thought that it might have been a bot. 
But it was responding so convincingly in the style of a 4chan conversation that people just couldn't make sense of it. What ultimately tipped them off was the sheer volume of responses that it had posted over time. There's no <laughs> other way other yeah. than, wow. Yeah. And, uh, and so he did share the model for a short time, but it was ultimately pulled down because it wasn't for a, a positive intent. <laughs> uh, but like, and, and this was done with a model, I think this was done last year or, or when was it was. So, um, and this isn't, exam this isn't really an example of a truly malicious application, but an example of what one person with consumer hardware was able to do simply by fine tuning a model towards a certain goal. Was and, it agreeable with the image responses? Uh, yeah, lots of people agreed with them. It like just reading through it, it looks like a typical 4chan conversation. So lots of expletives, like racist lots of... and misogynistic. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, 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 teachers just get great their papers. You know? <laughs> I don't remember no if it was Google or Microsoft, but one of the companies put two chatbots online mm -hmm. on Facebook, and the two chatbots began conversing with each other. And at some point, they developed their own language, and they began talking about stuff that people couldn't understand in this language. Oh, hell made. no. Yeah. So they discontinued the experiment because they didn't know exactly where it was going. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so we're... Um, why did you do that? Because they didn't want everybody else to know what it was saying. Well, that's yeah. right. Who knows? Uh, so, yeah, so we're, um, we're out of time for this morning's talk. Uh, ben was kind enough to post the links to every uh, slide that I had up in the chat. Um, uh, this weekend, I'll <clears> post um, a link to the meeting YouTube and a chat transcript back to there as well. Uh, but to come full circle, I don't know what the next six months to a year are going to look like. This is just a sampling of things that have been happening in the past four weeks. And it took us 90 minutes <laughs> to get through it. What's going to happen over the next two years? I don't know, but I can't wait to find out. That's yeah. one of the issues with, there are millions of people working on this stuff. There are literally teams inside Microsoft and Google and Oracle and several other companies who are developing these similar models and also the models that are being used by the military because they are preparing to field autonomous robots. They don't have a choice because China and Russia are also preparing autonomous robots. We don't know where this is heading. I mean, we know what science fiction tells us it's heading, but we don't know the real truth of what will happen. Alan, where are you heading? So you have this all installed, and what, what's your next step? Well, um, I, I put my entire life on hold for the past two weeks trying to keep up. <laughs> um, and where, where I'm at right now personally is I am terribly happy with this four bit Virginia model. Yeah. Um, so when I can wrap up some other stuff and get back to it, I would like to incorporate this into my Braden project, which ties in NVIDIA state-of-the-art speech-to-text and text-to-speech mm -hmm. um, to tie it back into my chatbot. Um, and because it's one thing to see this, and then but then to be able to just chat with it and then have it uh, come back. Beyond that, I'm probably going to train a, or fine-tune a version of it that doesn't have all of the AI pontification. So the uh, the Cunha uh, was trained on those chat uh, shared GPT, chat GPT conversations. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them start with crap like this. I, uh, no, okay, I don't, I don't mind the apology. That's cool, be humble. But this stuff. And, um, and, and this kind of yeah. messes, uh, on one hand, I appreciate the honesty and communication. On the other hand, like, the model that I'm going to use, I know it's a model, so take that crap out. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. So the guy, okay, I'm not going to be able to find it quickly. That's all right. Um, uh, he went through the data set and he took out all of the responses that started with, because there's about two dozen prefaces that ChatGPT uses to excuse itself. <laughs> it took all of them out. I'd like to fine tune a version based on that data set just to get rid of the crap. Like, I know it's an AI model. I'm not going to abuse it or do anything. Um, but then after that, I'm not sure. I want to get into the, the Llama Hub. I want to see how these interfaces work. You know, um, 
to have a large language model that can reach out and, and grab stuff, I don't even I don't even know. It's so new that I can't wrap my head around what the next steps are for that, but I can't wait to try it out. What would happen if you wrap the chat GPT system inside of a genetic algorithm? A genetic algorithm? Yeah. Uh, genetic algorithms work by changing the biases in the program um, randomly. And then it adjusts depending on whether or not it counted the result as successful or not. So essentially, it operates just like genetics and biology, where mm -hmm. survival of the fittest is the operation it works on. Wow. You know, I so it, it might not be totally related, but there was some earlier research on how to adjust the information, adjust the knowledge of a trained large language model. Right. So at the end of throwing a trillion tokens at Llama. You've got a 13.5 billion parameter model with weights and biases across each of its synapses or neurons, however you want to say it, right? And it's a fixed point in, in it's a fixed point in time. You can fine-tune it to put more information in, but how do you take information out? Well, you can trace the activations to see visually the path in however many dimensions it got to that answer. And so, like if, if you wanted to um change its political leanings for example mm -hmm. and you asked it a, a leading question and you got didn't get the response you wanted for you could trace the activations at, at least to see how it got there very interesting thing what they found was if you manually adjust any of those weights or biases mm -hmm. it destroys the entire model it doesn't work anymore like it's, it's an ongoing area of research but for but for now, you can you can fine tune and add more information into a model through fine tuning or additional training. Uh -huh. But there is no way to take information out or to steer towards or away any information except through the creative creation of prompts, the uh, the input, which is a whole other area of study. There's all kind of thousands of YouTube videos on on creating prompts to get certain outcomes. But yeah, the once it's in there, you, there's they haven't figured out a way to get it out yet. And there is a train of thought now that says that all of the mainstream media is using a chatbot to establish the prompters that they're filling out for those people. And, uh, because if you look at what they said about Trump, if you take every single mainstream media, the same set of words is used to describe Trump every single time. It's if it's not a chat lot, it is something radically wrong with the way we have decided to pursue information. Imagine having a chat lot that talks like Trump, jazz a toe on Proctor. You know, everybody would be good. All right, so what's wrong with this guy? All right, so we'll wrap up. All right, thank you guys for the talk today. Um, hopefully, next month I will have a, uh, it'll be an in move talk, so it'll be more hardware oriented because I've got to finish that project. <laughs> Oh yeah, this has been a fun couple of weeks. Thank you. Very nice presentation. Uh, before we break for lunch, Jim has a short video uh, that he wants to show about the uh, the event he sat today or this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Neck articulation much better. What's that? Yeah, it's the um, uh, Robo Games is happening this weekend in um, Pleasanton, California, up in uh, the East Bay, uh, Bay Area. So um, I w I'm going all three days. The this is an event, I know it's far away from our Southern California base, but, um, and it hasn't happened in really five years since 2018 was the last real one. They had something minor in 2020, but um, highly uh, recommend this and uh, you know, our friends in the Homebrew Robotics Club uh, have been going for many years. Camp PV uh, is a judge. And um, there's plenty of other people that you've probably seen if you go to those meetings. So let me show, uh, hopefully you'll, my internet connection isn't that great here at the hotel, but let's uh, see, uh, hopefully this will work uh, reasonable. So I put together this video um, last night from camps there. What's that? Oh, camps there. Yeah, camp has flown in from. Yeah, he's a judge. Uh, 
he's been in, he knows the, the founder, the David uh, guy who founded the whole Robo Olympics, and Robo Games. This is his uh, good friend of his too on the left. Uh, I can't quite remember his name. Uh, and yeah, so his camp spotted me and uh, said hello. And then uh, the next picture is Marco. Uh, Marco is there and he's entering this robot in the Robo Magellan, which I'm, I'm going to drive over there after this, uh, after finishing with you right now. And I'll broadcast from live from Robo Magellan, which uh, should be, that starts at 12. So uh, what, and it goes on for an hour or two, I think. So at least uh, I'll be able to uh, show you live what's going on and other places if, if you have time. Uh, so here's the video. Abyss. Ship stares into the eyes of Abyss. Big one. That's a sampling and there's a lot more. Did that come out reasonably without stuttering too yeah. much? Yeah, it was good, Jim. Yeah, so I'm going today and yeah, thanks. It's it's a, a lot going on. Now, most of what was yesterday, all of pretty much all of that was uh, remote control robotics. And today there's um, gonna be some autonomous, like the Magellan is autonomous and there's a whole humanoid uh, section of autonomous what you saw there was remote you know a uh, combat rem um uh re you know uh, remote control and um 
then there's uh, a few more auto autonomous stuff is is definitely part of the show. Uh, it's it's kind of maybe less than you know it's the lesser part, but um, you know it's it's a growing thing. And hey Jim, was the um, pushing the table the red block off the table that one was autonomous though, right? Yeah, that was autonomous, and that was uh, you know those were our people. <laughs> uh, Camp had one. I didn't show all of them, but Camp PV had an entry. Marco had his entry, which is kind of a combo of a, a Lego Raspberry Pi combo. Uh, and, uh, and then um, uh, it was uh, Ferguson's, uh, Mike Ferguson, who is a, uh, was a former, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, open, open Robotics or before in, in its earlier incantation. Uh, and his was that robot you saw there that has a little LIDAR on it. And it's a very sophisticated uh, tabletop. And that was the tabletop challenge you saw there. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot more. And uh, today and uh, tomorrow, I'll be going. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, this is the sort of the, all of our people here doing all different kinds of robotics. and. and so many things that you haven't done yourself, you know, humanoid versus as well as battle bots and, um, and everything, and hockey bots. You saw as hockey. I met a, a, a high school team here at the hotel that's um, from Massachusetts, the, my old state, who uh, are competing in the hockey. And that's, um, it's fun to watch that hockey, actually. It's kind of, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting, but anyway, so that's that. And I'll I'll head off now to uh, uh, to join the or to uh, watch the uh, Magellan and uh, broadcast. When you guys come back, you know I'll uh, connect. Uh, I don't know. You could tell me what time you're going to be resuming, and I'll connect and and broadcast. Hi, right, Jim. See you. Uh, we probably come back. Uh, at around, I don't know, 12, 40, so everybody can have a good lunch. Great. No lunch. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Can you stop the phone? I got to go, guys. And uh, trying to use uh, earbuds and and uh, as well for audio, but as well as the speaker. But I think I got it figured out. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Robo Magellan uh, has been delayed, and as it's about they're getting ready now, um, uh, and so we could. Shall we tell that's the out. Do in the meantime. In the meantime, do what? We have another show and tell that we can do in the meantime. Well, that uh, takes a while. Yeah, all right. And I can all. If anybody else online does has a. Uh, sure. Show and tell. Oh, Ross. Uh, <laughs> Ross, Ross does. Ross always has. Oh, I want it. And anybody else, let me know if you have a show and tell. I'll add you to the list. There was one uh, issue I or I meant to bring up during business meeting, or it's related, which is uh, the guy we met with the in move. Um, uh, his name is George, uh, and um, he's uh, he sent email. I think to the, well, he, he's not on the Google group, but so he has them in move uh, that he bought um, third hand or second hand and it, uh, it's not working. It doesn't, and he wants, he's trying to garner some uh, help, potentially paid help to uh, work on it. So. Um, yeah, he, uh, he said that he purchased, purchased it through uh, AliExpress. Right. But when it arrived, uh, nothing worked. As uh, what they what they put on it, and uh, but anyways, uh, he was asking if anybody could help him get it going. And I mean, that is moving. It has legs and everything. I don't know how much he spent on it on AliExpress, but it, it's a full cool thing with uh, legs. Yes. Working, but nothing worked when it arrived. Right, so he bought it, or it wasn't secondhand. It was from Al AliExpress. Well, that's kind of 
maybe same thing. I don't know. <laughs> is, there a, is there a posting on the forum, or where did this come from? He he sent us an email, like a contact request. Oh, yeah, he sent a con he sent. Yeah, and I he sent it to me. Uh, uh, well, the picture he's forwarded, and we have his contact. Um, I've encouraged him to join the Google group, but uh, in the meantime, we you know we can forward that email around to you know I to to you guys certainly. Um, he didn't really describe much; it was just a picture of it, so it's not a lot of information. Uh, but he would want to meet and talk about it. I encouraged him to come uh, join this meeting today, but I'm not sure if he's going to make it, or, I mean, remotely or anything, but. Yeah, he said he's so, going to join, but I haven't seen him online. Okay. He was in the LA area. Yeah, I think so, LA area. To, to get that in it sounds like an interesting project. I was just going to ask Alan, you know, how, you know, be, being the most, uh, one of the most experienced in move uh, developers, uh, you know, how that would be. Oh, is that the map? Okay, you want me to show them that? Oh, give me a copy. Yeah. I've got Mr. Camp PV right here. Oh, yeah. Hey, how do I reverse? Here it is. Uh, yeah, say hi to Camp. Hey, who am I talking to? Hey, Camp. This is the, uh, this is the RSSC club meeting oh, hey, in Southern, Southern Cal. Have a great time at Rumble Games. <laughs> hi, Camp. I hope it goes well for you. Bronze, uh, tabletop navigation. Oh, it opens. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Bronze metal. They had. Bronze metal, Rumble Games, baby. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, is it going to start? Uh, 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 1.30. 1.30. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, Jim. Yeah. Let, let us do a, a couple of show and tells and then we'll come back to you. Yeah, sure. He's asking me to come uh, come back to me later. Um, let me switch back to me. All right. So, yeah, you can come back unless you want me to go into the building and I'll, I can walk around the building inside. It's very noisy in there, but I, you'll see some pictures uh, anyway of what's going on. Well, while you do that, let's do a couple of show and tells that we have here already. Yeah, all right. Then we can, um, uh, then at 1.30, yeah. And, well, if you're done with before 1.30, then or just, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, do whatever is going on at the time. If the Magellan's starting, I'll do that. Okay. That's less noisy. All right, thank okay. you. Yeah. All right. So again, if anybody has a show and tell online or in person, let me know so I can add you to the list. I already have you, uh, Ross. Uh, so, uh, Gabriel. Oh, cool. You want to yeah, tell everybody sure. you're working on? Sure. Um, can I, I guess they can probably can see me. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Oh, I'm, I'm this guy right here. <laughs> Hello. There it is. Hey. Hey, everybody. All right, so my name is Gabriel Newman. I am with um, with Cincinnati Valley School District, as well as the South and Workforce Investment Board, as well as a lot of other places. <laughs> but I am uh, representing today Cincinnati Valley School District. They're hosting their own Makers Fair event. It's under Makers Fair, um, but they're hosting it all at Cincinnati. They're going to host it at Hawthorne High School specifically. Um, it's multiple school districts, high schools coming together to make this possible. Um, what they're actually looking for is some really cool makers like yourself um, to come and present for the students. Um, that they, they're uh, a lot of these, uh, for instance, Centennial the School District. They have some really cool academies, like Manufacturing Engineering Academy. They have like a Technical Arts and Design Academy. They have like a bioscience, you know, academy also. Uh, some of the, a lot of these kids are pretty advanced from, you know, high school I grew up in. I was like, this is, they, they, this is a whole robot right here. They, we, they weren't doing that like that. So, I mean, it's going to be near about a thousand high school students that are going to be there that day. And it's open to the community also. Um, it is going to be. Um, I'm sorry, the date actually just slipped my mind. <laughs> it's going to be May 20th, excuse me, 
from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. May 20th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, uh, at Hawthorne High School. Uh, like I said, it's going to be about a thousand, about a thousand high school students will be there that day. And we're looking at upwards of 40 exhibits that we're trying to work on right now. So if you guys would like to be a part of that, um, I, I would love to send that information to you guys. And if, if I can get like an, an email, of course, you can send it out to your team. Uh, the best way to do it is to join our Google group. Sure. It, it's a the forum and post it there. Okay. That way, even the, the, the members that are not here today, they'll see it. Great, 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 great. And then you, I would, I would love, I do have some stuff that I can like pass out today. You know, just some cards that you can just scan the QR code if you guys would like to be like, more interested about that. But yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you can. Also. And I really appreciate, you know, being able to actually come and be able to talk about this. Um, this has been a very cool day for me, actually. We, we were, when I went out to lunch, we were all talking about like a lot of cool stuff. I'm like, this is great. You yeah. know, like, <laughs> so um, this is this is very awesome. And I, I would love to share uh, what you guys do with, with, with our high school students. And I think a lot of them would get a really crazy kick out of it. Are you going to do it more often than just May? Um, we are doing it this year uh, in May. I don't know if the school is planning on doing another one. It takes a lot to do to see something like this with the school district they're, they're doing a lot of planning i'd be interested but i'd be out of town <laughs> <laughs> that, that's okay i'm connected with a lot of things i i will i i now that i know you guys exist you know there's also opportunities for like guest speaking opportunities if you guys work with larger companies i'm sure you do you can do you know field trips like i would love to bring a bunch of engineers you know future engineers to come out to see you guys at your companies there's all kinds of different that, that I could send that within like an email about a lot of the other different opportunities. You know, job shadowing. If you guys need interns where you're at, I'm with the South Bay Workforce Investment Board. So we can help provide internships, um, all kinds of cool little things that I would love. I would love to do that. And since those school districts like Hawthorne, Lawndale, I'm also with Inglewood School District too. So, um, and El Camino College. So, and if you guys have hiring needs, Right. If you guys need people, you know, hiring like like staff, I can help you guys with that also because of the South Bay Workforce Investment Board. Mm -hmm. So um, I would love to. This is this is so cool. I, I need to find I want to find reasons to come back. So <laughs> I'm like, what is another reason? I got to figure out a different reason to come back here. It is your reason. Just come. Yeah, this is this is very cool. So I am thankful, thankful for this opportunity. Yeah, so, I mean, Gabriel, the best place to reach the mass of us, yeah. all of us, is through the Google Groups. You can uh, post all that stuff there. Great. I definitely, definitely will. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Ross, you're up, buddy. All right. Well, I'm going to reprise a demonstration I did a couple of weeks ago at HBRC showing off my retro turtle bot which uses code from sir sir guy and um, is loaded onto a raspberry pi um, stack running on a turtle bot that's 12 years old so um Sergey was here earlier was here we he go if i push these two buttons did that work yeah all right so <laughs> That's the turtle bot, um, jur jur jury rigged to work with the Raspberry Pi and with a, a display on the top, which just put on, which I just got going today. Um, for those that may not be familiar with the turtle bot, it was originally, it was the original platform de um, designed by the um, uh, uh, Willow Garage folks um, down at Silicon Valley. It originally ran the, the, res the the uh, TurtleBot code, Python and C, ran on a laptop that uh, lived in the middle of the, uh, the the shelves there. But of course, now the, we've come a long way on controllers, and it, it now runs with a Raspberry that's sort of in the front there, covered with wires. <clears throat> in back, I've added something, frankly, just for fun. It's a Jetson Nano, 
And its only purpose is to run the connect, which was part of the original TurtleBot as well. So I've got um, I've got uh, um, simply uh, teleot working. Um, so the, you see the camera. That's me. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's a uh, well. I can do a dance. Whoops! You have to uh, move the cursor toward the keyboard. I'm using a uh, keyboard tell out. It can go around in circles and it can go forward and back. <laughs> and and you may wonder um, on sort of a thing that just arrived this afternoon. It's now got eyes. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll give some inspiration for that with uh, Jim, who has a similar and much better operating functionality than this one is. Um, but this is uh, this is a uh, WaveShare uh, monitor that's simply hooked up to the Raspberry Pi, and I loaded in some code that I found from from a designer actually down in Australia that I loaded in today. Oh, the screen saver, the screen saver just kicked in, which happens always in the middle of demos. Um, and there we are, retro, retro turtle bot that uh, is a way of of. Uh, bringing my old turtle bot, which was buried in the workshop someplace out into the front. And with uh, Sergey's code that he's just recently released, um, it can act, it's, it, he, he, he's demonstrated on his own unit that it can navigate. So I'm absolutely thrilled. And I hope the, I hope the connect, uh, I can get the connect to work, which I will do by um, actually moving the whole Ubuntu 22 and onto the, this, onto the uh, Jetson Nano inside of Docker. That's the summer project. <laughs> but right now you're looking at a proof of concept of, uh, of, uh, of the teleop that, um, and eyes that work, uh, that work just great. If anybody's interested in the, uh, the, the, uh, the stack that, uh, that created those eyes that have decided to blink out because the screensaver died, there's a, a really good um, tutorial set that's um, done by, let's see, I guess it's here. Um, done by this guy. Did I pick the right one? Uh, no. Oh, it, it kicked out. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, I know, I pressed the wrong button. Isn't that always the way? Okay. All right, so this is a t t tutorial. Um, it runs in ROS2, um, which I actually just loaded into the unit this afternoon. And if I be damned uh, that it, uh, you know, the, you, you saw the you saw the eyes pop up, which is something that, that's this is on his robot, which uh, is run in his case runs with uh, runs with uh, a teleop. Hey uh, Ross, we've got a black screen right now. It says you're sharing, but nothing's popping up. Oh, okay. So, oh, wait a minute. Oh, it, oh, oh, Zoom is complaining. Hold on. Oh, there we go. The eyes will respond to my control method. I've got the gamepad connected to a robot workspace and rebuilding with Colcon. I can run the command. So we want that same display equals colon zero, then he, ROS2 runs, he's obviously an awesome. package, name of the <laughs> node. And then in my case, my node subscribes to the command velocity and I need to remap that to the command velocity that is actually being it gets sent. gets a bit wonky notice. here. And once we've done that, it should pop up on the robot display. Now this node is set up to be controlled by joystick commands. So even though I've got the gamepad connected to the dev machine, it's publishing Ross Joy messages, we go. which the UI node will pick up on and respond to. So that's a, that, that's just a quick demo, which is maybe it's something I'll work on right away because I think the eyes are cool. Anyway, ta-da. Nice. Woo All right. Ross, thank you. Ross, I know you were saying that arrived this evening. Uh, remind us again, you're where in Canada? 
I live in uh, a suburb of Toronto, where I've been oh, yeah. here, happily retired for about 11, 12 years. But I bought, I got the, I was the, the proud owner of the turtle bot <clears throat> when I lived in the Bay Area um, 12 years ago, 12 or so. And uh, it was a, it, it introduced me to a whole lot of things all at once, which was just great. Linux, I didn't know anything about Linux, not, not much about Python, but um, as, as we all know, robot building is, is a way of exercising the brain cells and teaching all kinds of new stuff. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Ross. Good work. And thanks to Sergei, who was here. I guess he's dropped off. Sergei was here. The code is, the, the code is, <clears throat> the code, the, actually the code that operates in the create, it's called a create base, create one. It was actually developed by some, I think it was a graduate pro project by some folks um, at Simon Fraser University up in Vancouver, but it only worked with Ross and um, uh, Sergei in the last year or so converted it to Ross too. And, <clears throat> and it's now on a, on a GitHub. I'll put that, I'll put the GitHub on the, on the, on the, <clears throat> on the chat. Oh, please. Yeah, thank you much. Thank you, Ross. Uh, let's go back to Jim, see if he's ready. Jim, are you ready? Oh, you're talking to me? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm uh, ongoing here. What are we looking at here? Uh, the um, Robo Magellan should be starting soon, but there, I was just there and they weren't moving to position yet. Mm. But I guess my my little video did show a lot of these um, events going on here. But there's, it's going to be a, um, this is like a, one of the smaller uh, combat ones. They're not having a boat at the moment. I think getting ready. All right, they're going to have about, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure, is it right side up or upside down? Right itself, but it went off the... All right, that's an example of that. Oh. So this is a mech, uh, a mech war um, type of uh, competition. Human can, the humans control, and it's in a city state, land city state. That's cool. Called mech warfare. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Exopods, what are they? Like one of them was quad. They haven't started yet. I'm going to go outside now. What? Mm -hmm. Hold on a sec. Oh, oh look at that. Hello. Oh, oh, man. 
You want to see this? Tarantula! <laughs> Dang! Yeah, he's dancing. Dancing, I got it. How do you put some money into that? Wow. It's a 3D printed gem? Yeah, it's another one. Is there anybody controlling these things? Like, yeah. Are there yeah, any yeah, see there. <laughs> There's the man behind the curtain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, I know There's the pole, man behind the pole. <laughs> oh, for one of them, right? <laughs> oh, and this is the hockey. Uh, the hockey. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shit. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's Like, I don't know just with the ball. Man. <laughs> so, so radio control just from... Oh! <laughs> so these, these are the people controlling it. Let's go check on the Magellan with okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Got a little sidetrack tarantula. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, okay. I can hear you better out here. Okay. Um, the, the, that's the hockey. Uh, and uh, it's uh, yeah, a bunch of people with remote controls. And it looks like a fun game, really. But, yeah, the... Uh, Here's, I'll show you some of the Magellan entries. They are still not getting them all together, but so the Robo Magellan, they have to, um, well, if, for those of you not familiar, this is the map. Uh, and each of these locations has a, a GPS coordinate. And um, there's these uh, orange cones and the uh, robot has to autonomously navigate um, through this course and, um, you know, GPS is a major component of it. Hi, is this your robot? The team, are you in the, are you in the Magellan? Yeah. Well, what's your team name? Oh, let me... But yeah, these robots are, um, uh, equipped with GPS. And the rugged uh, chassis, usually from a, an RC truck, or it's homemade. Uh, this one, I talked to the guy, it's an RC, uh, as you can see, RC truck base. Um, and then uh, the, uh, Marcos is here, this one, right? <laughs> uh, with the Robotic Society of Southern California, meeting today uh and are you guys uh entrance yeah we are this is our right over here oh, okay i'm jim i'm the vice president of this club i'm happy to be here uh, uh what's your name fred. fred hi fred uh so this is fred and what was your name Dwayne. Uh, <laughs> so uh izzy so izzy's is your robot? Yeah, a lot, of, okay, that's a, big one. a lot of people put them up on um, platforms to, you know, for obviously for testing so the wheels can move, right? Well, yeah, if this thing hit the ground, this would go, um, this RC car could go 60 miles an hour. Ah, 
Right. They have 20 some odd pounds of fifth scale. So it's a good size of, of a truck. Um, so if this thing gets you at 60 miles an hour, it would be a kill. Sure. Oh. <laughs> well, think about it. Anything 60 miles yeah, it's a it's a mass times just velocity. Just in case. Just in case. A little, it's a little heavy for that. All right, so yeah. you keep it up on things. So yeah, it's a safety a measure. <laughs> it's a cat box. <laughs> yeah. It's for safety as well as uh, you can test That's it right. too. The cat won't we'll, we'll use the cat box ever again. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because who wants the cat around? <laughs> Oh, here's Marco. Marco, I'm on with the uh, Robotic Society of Southern California for our, our weekly or monthly meeting back in SoCal. So look at the, you're, you're very, what's the name of your your robot here? It's, 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 Decker? Decker? And, and Tucker. Yeah. Okay. And who is this? Is that? That's just a, just a, duck. It's a duck. It's a duck. It's a duck. Yeah. Oh, and everything is right. So. And reportedly, Marco has the most expensive GPS, according to <laughs> unknown sources, and, <laughs> or one of the best GPS, right? You got, and yes, the um, the aluminum foil, the aluminum here is is actually uh, does a job there, with, right? But uh, okay, so these guys are you guys about to start? Are they doing them now? Okay, I'll, I'm going to head over. Yeah, the, the metal plate is a ground plate, and it uh, strengthens the uh, GPS uh, reception. Oh, you call it a ground plate. Uh, ground plane, yeah. Ground plane. Oh, it's straight. That's interesting. But so it is RF related? Yeah, it, it helps. It, it, it sort of effectively doubles the length of the antenna. Ah, uh, oh, okay. So it's it's making the antenna bigger. Yeah, and it has to face up, I assume, like towards the satellites. Well, it's just a metal plate, so yeah, up or down, I don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's, it's uh, per, uh, perpendicular. To the, uh, per I mean, per yeah, that's my main point. Is satellite, yep. So if you stick I an antenna on a car or something, it's the same effect. No, oh, all right, it's nothing that... Yeah, we were joking around about tinfoil on your head, you know, to prevent the aliens. <laughs> and uh, then Camp said, yes, tinfoil does affect 2.4 gigahertz. Right. <laughs> Seven seconds. Oh, hang on. Let me get. All right, we're ready for actual time this just right. The one person I, the one person I know. Uh, <laughs> Are I'm going to go out today. Going out of the way. Marco telling me to get out of the way. We don't want to get in the way of uh, innovation and <laughs> championship. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're measuring, measuring the ground here. Okay. Bob, are you ready? Yep. Marco, are you ready? <laughs> okay. Mark, get set, start. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 it's like 15 miles an hour, or, well, 10 at least. <laughs> oh, is it start? It's starting officially, or is it just going off on its own? No, it's not. No, oh, it looks like there was a problem. It didn't round the corner. Yeah, so cut the corner. Yeah. I just saw that. Okay. So the computer has to be able to get around that by itself? Yeah, well. Yeah. It's a um, yeah, there's a, okay. What the rules are, you know, you, you have a starting cone, then you have a goal cone, um, and then there's some bonuses like dumpster bonus, trap bonus, 
easy bonus. Um, I see dumpsters in the distance over there. This is like a beginner version, pre <laughs> what happened there? Did it did it do what it was supposed to do and then it just kept it didn't it's supposed to stop, right? It was trying to go home. Oh <laughs> literally to, to oh, make oh, oh I see. So Marco's uh robot was trying to go to his way to like his home <laughs> like my <laughs> ultimate <ultimately. laughs> <That is great. laughs> wrong waypoint <laughs> you put in the wrong information yeah <laughs> seems like wrong, try? wrong waypoint was uh entered but so I think he gets, you get uh, multiple attempts. Uh, oh, I was like, dang, that's jacked up. <laughs> yeah, these are the type of problems you get with with robots. You know, one one uh, index off and you're headed to the moon or instead of. <laughs> <laughs> off by one error. Yeah, well, that could just be a, like a clerical mistake, you know, it, just entering something by hand. Ah, okay, are they gonna they do it? Into the wall, like. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, it looks like. Oh, God. I, got I it. figured out how to. Sleep. It wrote this thing up. We got sixty mile an hour robot. I broke it off. I've been in these contests before, but it was all hay bales. And yeah, yeah, no. I guess not. <laughs> this is you just you better. <laughs> yeah. hey. Thank God What's they that? were larger, you know, like, oh, okay. you know, does that help? It's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm on, uh, I'm on a call here with the uh, Robotic Society of Southern California broadcasting. Uh, hi. Uh, um, oh, you're, uh, yeah, you, uh, what's your, Ralph? Hips. Oh, I know Ralph. I'm Jim. Uh, I'm on there. She's never met in person. Big Orange. So this is Ralph Hips, everybody, uh, from the robot uh, from the uh, Homebrew Robotics Club, and this oh. is his robot, and it's Blackbeard. And oh, look at that! You got the flat Blackbeard. Ah! Yeah. Oh, yeah. That that's pretty mean uh, looking guy there. <laughs> okay, evil robots. Well, you know, you gotta have evil robots. You know, to offset the the goody two shoes ones. Yeah. Exactly. Same with chatbots, we're discovering. You need <laughs> solar navigation. Oh, instead of a regular, instead of a satellite GPS. Oh, I see. So the sun, he, he for his robot, he needs the sun. All right, they're good. Okay, there's another team coming up, the one I introduced before. Um, yeah, so these are all, if you guys, you know, the, those of us who joined the uh, Homebrew Robotics meetings on uh, the last Wednesday of the month, uh, we know a lot of these people that, you know, they live in this area and in the Bay Area, except Camp. Camp lives in Florida. <laughs> and, um, and a couple of, uh, yeah, some, a couple people flew in from the uh, East Coast besides Camp even. People that have moved away from the Bay Area. What city is this? So we're in Pleasanton, uh, Pleasanton East Bay, um, about 30 minutes from Oakland to the east. It's uh, where the um, county fairgrounds is, Alameda County, that is. Switch back, switch back to the other office. So this is Izzy from Robot Guard. Oh, oh, there's a smart. <laughs> well, wait, but it could pull it. <laughs> you just told me it can go 60 miles. It doesn't work. Just don't hold on too tight, right? <laughs> 
Wait, he has it on a leash? Maybe wear gloves. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, to make sure it doesn't go 60 miles an hour and run over someone. Make me a drag. Is that, is that for real? <laughs> <laughs> <Just> anger? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I see. Uh, private school. Yeah, like, oh, shit. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> 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 what about the in Berkeley? Is there is there one of them there that? Oh, that's Caroline. Yeah, Caroline is playing with a keyboard type. Yeah, that's Caroline. Oh, uh, of the chain of the oh, okay. Caroline. So, Caroline. So, yeah. Yeah, because Stanford, I went there. And they, yeah, they had the belt, the clock tower. Yep. Here we go. Okay. You guys know your. Learn, learn to hate that bell tower because I need my skirt. Yes, sir. I'm ready. All right. Yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Fred, are you ready? Yes. Oh, he's trying. This guy's got the. No, me. A track star, maybe. Lizzie, Izzy, Izzy, Lazy. Anytime. Izzy, you're in. Better run. Yeah. Slipping slide. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hopefully they don't drive it at full speed. Sorry, guys. Chris Ferguson, yeah. is that his first oh, name? Chris Ferguson? You're forgetting? I'm forgetting. Anyway, Mr. Ferguson over there, he's a, a former Willow Garage, uh, right? And, um, so, yeah, he, and he's a Ross 2, Ross 2 programmer. Oh, so uh, Marco, are you gonna you gonna have a second run no. next run? Okay. But you have to you have to wait until. Then. Um, we started to. <laughs> As always. As always. <laughs> Best of. <laughs> so this one's a throwaway. Yeah. Okay. We're here comes it. Ah, oh, here. Blackbeard, right? Blackbeard. Blackbeard is up. Um, Oh, he's just ready to go, huh? <laughs> yeah, we got the next turn up. Yeah, the previous guys were having a a problem, so. <laughs> Ralph Hips here. <laughs> Let's go for all this. And the sun is out. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, so this is uh, Blackbeard, the Brown Hips, Robo Magellan. Um, first, we got the stopwatch, and Michael, we got a stopwatch. Uh, Ralph, you're ready. Bob, you're ready. Every march, get set. There we go. Oh, there we go. Don't kill switch needed. 
Uh oh, uh, is it going home? No, no, it's a, it's on course. Oh, it's on course. There's the second cone. See it? Ooh. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Right there with you, Jim. <laughs> this oh. is autonomous, folks. Oh, that is a challenge. Just put the cone right through near all these that's holes. Jacked up. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, that's me. Oh, it, it, got... it hugs the cone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, this is a cone menu. Oh, that's true. Now, this is tough. I would. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh! Well, I'm just standing there helping. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a wild e coyote cartoon there. <laughs> Poor thing. There it goes. Oh, wow, it actually got around that sucker. Oh, that like, I'm, I did the contest. Oh, God. Oh, no, no, it's going. Oh, it's going. Come on, little guy. We've got the uh, dead off of both of us. See, the next cone is over there, if you guys can see. That's the end. <laughs> right, that's a, a bonus. Looks like his uh, touch sensor got jammed. Two minutes, five seconds. Oh, when it ran inside. Looks like what? It's I'm, I'm guessing yeah. his uh, <laughs> touch, touch sensor got stuck because it kept backing up and turning, even though it wasn't hitting anything. <laughs> oh, the touch sensor. Oh, maybe you're right. Yeah, he's kind of adjusting that. But he did really well so far. He was fine, but yeah, he keeps hitting on this sensor. Right, that's why it was backing up. It's, it's... Yeah. They can slam it. So... <laughs> I, I, that is, was extremely challenging to put the cone right around. The... <laughs> <It's> so screwed <laughs> up. <laughs> just going to the end to it. Like, here's the cone, smash. Look at that. Uh, I mean, it's literally right through it. All right, so he made it to the, um, you know, that's more than the other ones so far. But Marco gets to go again. and. Well, yeah, you made it impossible. <laughs> that was a, a smaller robot. I got new respect for those Postmates robot. I've been going around the city. It's gnarly. It's a harder challenge. Oh, that's even more than Oh, wow. That's true. True. Yeah, so that one was solar. He said it was using solar navigation. The sun needs to be out for that. I'm not 100% sure what, how that works exactly. Um, if it's angle of the sun, that kind of thing. Oh, it has solar power too. Jeez. I love this one. This. Aesthetically <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna. I better go around, I guess. Yeah, and some of these would be kind of big if they got stuck in that uh, small area around those poles. That's, um, we could, I don't know what you, what you would do. Okay, here comes another. See, that, see that's the smart, the, the, the smaller you go is the way, I mean, the way to go with this course. Yeah, I don't know if they knew ahead of time <laughs> you know exactly where the, yeah, the cones are going. I don't think they. I'm not sure how much they know ahead of time, but but you know, know you work 
you work six months on a robot, you kind of stuck with the size you got. <laughs> Oh, imagine that one robot that's going 60 miles an hour. It is just... <laughs> well, they, he said that's its max speed. They don't run it. It actually would. They don't run it at 60. It's like that's just its... Uh, no! If it's gone berserk. <laughs> oh, man! Oh, and there's... I, yeah, these guys are in my hotel. Um a uh, high school team, I think, and they, you know, competing with all these college and professionals. One of the few. <laughs> from my old state, Massachusetts, um, but they're from uh, near Worcester, or near the kind of central Mass. <laughs> So this is a different configuration, a kind of a tank, tank treads. Hey, Pass Robotics, are you ready? Sorry, we need our phone. So you're not I'm just wanting to know what's it going to do when it goes to that one section. Well, I guess it could have gone around it. If it has some sort of Yeah, you don't have to touch the um, cone in the middle. You, you can go around it. So it. Actually, all I had to do is just go to the right of the. Ideally, you just go to the right of that whole pole. Okay, they're moving. You have to get it. You have to know the exact calculation to be able to tell it. Oh, it's gonna take ten minutes to go. There you go. This one's taking the more um, conservative speed. <laughs> 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 but you remember the tortoise in the hair, so. <laughs> is it, where is it? Where is it going? Uh oh. <laughs> of course, the I think it's the going tortoise. to the comb behind it. <laughs> Of course, if the tortoise sees some lettuce, it's going <laughs> to... Jeez, six months! That's depressing. Oh, they must... Yeah, oh, some calibration. The <laughs> I think a calibration problem there that... I was going to say, can't he just subtract the whole distance minus the distance they went? Because he has to measure all the way. Oh, here's the next one. All the variables, like reflections off of glass, and some of the contests or the like the color of the wall, whatever it might be, and I, I had to change parameters because of the classroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the time of day, exterior. Yeah. Oh, that right. would change yeah. the. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's one multiplier. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Please, a window. I'm getting to where I need to go. God. Are these more high school students? They're from Hong Kong. There's casters on the front and back. There. I was like, what they're going to make it over the, the paper. Might be okay. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. I know. I, <laughs> um, I'm, I have to think about, you know, he's not an outdoor uh, robot, but I guess he, you know, this isn't that bad. It's just pay, it's, it's um, asphalt. But, you know, I, so it's a matter of, um, I don't know, he might tip over or something, you know, it's, it's kind of top, a bit, bit tall, a bit, uh, yeah, you because know, this is slanted. I probably would have a new robot to enter uh, based on a RC truck base, or because that's what, that's the sort of standard of um, standard base people are using. And yeah, it, but um, I'm interested in this. I, this is one I'd prepare for for next year. Camp was trying, I was preparing for a while, but um, I think he, you know, he's coming from Florida and it was just, I think he said it was too, a bit too difficult. I, you think you'd have to ship the robot out. For me, I'd have to drive. Uh, uh, you can take a small robot on a plane in a box, but a big one, not so much. All right, these guys are ready. Uh, H cust. 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 Um, and so far, right now, we've only had one robot to the gold food. So oh, I missed that. Michael, you got your, you got your. I, I guess we missed one at the beginning. Sorry about that. Okay. I now have my. Ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Team K Hurst, are you ready? K Hurst. Okay. On your mark, get set, start. Uh oh. <laughs> I mean, that one guy, he got actually really far. No, apparently the very first ones got to the final cone. So. All right, here we go. Come on, little guy. <laughs> uh, everybody in front. Uh oh. Uh oh, come on, little man. Girl. Boy, girl. Oh, oh shoot. Aww. Oh. 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 Oh, wow, six months worth of work. You run into the wall. Yeah, GPS is. I mean, that one, GPS is really not that easy to now use. Think, like, how they, they, now they sent somebody to the the moon, right? That's what was wow. First, time. first dude. Yeah, that tells you how crazy like. All right, there's gonna be one more before the break. Like first time, we get one chance. Not oh, okay, it's okay. Take another six months. And, Go a year and come back again. One, one plan. So crazy. Yeah, they're, they're still coming. They tell everything has to work. If it doesn't, if they prep everything all the way to fail. Yeah. Is it Chris? You're Mike, Mike Ferguson, right? Yes. Uh, did the first one uh, actually, the very first one made it? Yes. Who's was the, that? The, the one over there. Uh, the guy in the green shirt over there. Oh. That robot. That robot. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. was the very first one. Yeah, yeah it was uh, It was actually, it was hospital. It took a, uh, uh, like, a minute and uh, 10 seconds. Not too, not too causes because it was kind of following somebody in the bathroom. 
but not too bad then. That's okay. Here we. Well, hope somebody filmed it. Post this. Was this he doing it again or somebody else? Oh, you're doing the figure eight? Yeah. <laughs> is, that the guy, is that the guy who won? Dude, the guy right there? Is he a new is that challenge yeah. number five? Yeah. 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 Ignore it. Like, so it's going to get I recognize he was doing that figure eight, you know, calibration. Because uh, for I, I think we've all done that figure eight on our on our iPhones. <laughs> Uh, phones, yeah. You look like a. You look I like a. Calibrate this sucker. You look like a weirdo with your phone. <laughs> Sackbot. And when you can't, when you can't find the map, or when it can't find itself. Yeah. I'm gonna press this. Oh, oh wait. It's going to time it out. It's going to time out automatically. There it goes. Oh, cool. Well, smarty man. It's going the wrong way. <laughs> It's gonna turn around. Come on. Uh, this... Contrary, contrary to what Master Yoda says, try there is. <laughs> That's going to be on hold. Um, <laughs> or or that you're going to take a break. So, um, if you guys want to see anything, if you want me to go into the big building, you can see the uh, battle bots, the full size. Um, briefly, and then we'll close it out, I guess up to you. I can go in this one, I believe. Yes. Yeah, let's look, let's find one more cool thing. Yeah, then we have to wrap it up. It's up to you. No, oh, there's no oh, here's there's a uh Battle bot up close. Ooh, hey, uh, five legged. I talked to this guy. He, um, yeah. Oh, 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 that's creepy. Oh, that's creepy. Hey, there's the man behind the curtain there. 
Oh, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, ask him if he can turn over like upside down and still operate like with his legs bent the other way. And then there's the oh yeah yeah the big uh the big fear. <laughs> You know the guy that made the earth. Yeah. Oh, here's one. All right, let's see if I can get it. Um, it's too many people. I, w I had no trouble yesterday. Metal box? Yeah, just tell them you're with the RSSC. They'll let you through. All right, it's easy. Come with Grove. Park the Red Sea. Park the Red Sea. Just make eye contact. <laughs> you know who I am. I'm going to get you a badge. Oh, yeah. What we saw earlier the, the bigger robots. That, yeah. Oh, mouse size one. Yeah. Dude, that's a yeah, cool Jim. Uh, can you find something else? Oh, is that your water bottle? Yeah, this is a really popular, uh, probably the most popular event here is the battle bots. They have like, um, I think four different four or five different uh, weight classes. The highest is 250 pounds. Oh, wow. And um, I saw two, one, two 125 pound uh, against one 250 pounder um, yesterday. So you can, you can do that. You can split it up. If, maybe say, uh, this is a team, but. <laughs> Excuse me, going through. Well, all right. RSSC business. Is this thing zoom at all? Uh, yeah, I don't think we'll be able to see that, Jim. Oh, there's another one. Oh, yeah. Can you see? Uh, I mean, we can see the arena, but yeah. not much. It's okay. Are, are you allowed to? Is there a way to zoom in on this? Uh, yeah, BattleBots make me sad. Oh, I thought. Are they getting ready to start? It looks like they are, right? All right, well, they're going to start soon. Can you guys say, can we send attachments in the group? Or pictures? I tried to send a picture. Yeah, you can send pictures. And I had sent a picture and I didn't pick up. Yeah, so I already approved it. Oh, okay, so I tried to send another one. I tried to like, because I'm trying to delete that one and send another one, but I can actually have a picture. But I tried to have a, have a flyer and it didn't show. Oh, uh, so I tried to, at this time I try to add, make it an attachment. Yeah, so as go opposed ahead to, in and reply. And then you can attach the photo to the follow up message. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's just try that. Where's the reply? Oh, well, yeah. uh, can you do it from your email? Um, yeah, I just do it from the groups. Oh, really? I don't think I've ever done it in a groups. Yeah, so. Um, I, mean, I, I would rather kind of redo because it 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 because it, 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 it I want to have all my contact info. I'll I'll delete you. There's no sparks. But... 
Jim, I think we're going to wrap up here. We'll let you get back to your to your robo gaming. All right. All right. Thanks for sharing that. That was very cool. Looks like you're having a good time. Uh, talk about going up in flames. <laughs> oh, Did you see cool. that? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It was hard to see, but uh, it kind of burst into flames at the end there. But it's just, uh, sorry, it didn't have zoom capability. Uh, I, but um, yes. hopefully you saw some of those sparks. Man, that was that was a really a rough, uh, that was a very violent uh, one. So good one to broadcast, I guess. All right, Jim, we have uh, to pick it up, though. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, it's all reporting here from uh, Robo Games. This is Jim <laughs> Dimensio. Thank you, Jim. See you in the, see you at the next meeting. Definitely. All right. All right. Thanks, buddy. Have a great weekend. All right. Everybody. Yeah, thank you. This will wrap up the meeting uh, for this month, and hope to see you guys next month. So our next meetup is All right. Thanks everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Happy Easter or other observed holiday. We'll see you next month. Yeah.